fluorescent valley appears timeless. Life suited to a cool, temperate climate flourishes here. But the world around us is constantly changing. Mountains rise and erode away. Life thrives and changes in a blink. Our sense of time and the environment around us is grounded in the present. But our planet, its climate, and its communities of life have been changing for millions of years. Sometimes, despite innumerable odds, a shadow of the past survives providing clues to ancient life that once existed in this very space. The geology, fossils, and human stories of Fluorescent Fossil Beds National Monument are part of a common geologic heritage. The layers of rock beneath this valley contain one of the richest fossil deposits in the world. They hold clues of unexpected environments and life that existed here during a time called the Late Eocene. Dinosaurs were extinct, and it was now the age of mammals. Around 37 million years ago, a distant explosion from a collapsing volcanic crater known as a caldera sent an enormous flow of superheated ash and gas racing across the landscape like a volcanic hurricane, incinerating everything in its path. Slowly, life regained a foothold by 34 to 35 million years ago as new powerful volcanoes loomed over the fluorescent valley. Periodic eruptions blanketed the valley with ash and debris. Rainfall saturated the loose debris on the slopes of the volcano, creating a massive, fast-moving mud flow called a lahar. It was miles long, and roughly 15 feet tall when it reached the fluorescent valley. The slurry of mud and volcanic ash surrounded the bases of towering redwoods. As the redwoods died, their tops decayed away. Groundwater, rich in dissolved silica from volcanic ash, gradually seeped into the wood, depositing minerals and petrifying it over time. Volcanic eruptions continued over thousands of years. Another flowing lahar blocked a stream, creating the ancient Lake Florissant. After several millennia, this lake and the landscape surrounding it nourished an abundance of life. Volcanic ash and clay settled on the lake bed, creating layers of various thickness over time. Single-celled algae called diatoms thrived in the mineral-rich water, then died periodically. The layers compressed and formed a thinly layered sedimentary rock called paper shale. Leaves, seeds, insects, fish, 
and even birds, settled to the bottom of the lake, where they were buried by new layers of volcanic ash, clay, and diatoms. Millions of years later, the shale holds fragile fossils, physical touchstones to ancient life, inspiring the mind with connections to this land and its past. Shadows of ancient human history can also be found here, part of the shared geologic heritage at Florissant. The Ute, Hickory Apache, and other tribes consider the area part of their ancestral lands. Tribal members still have a strong connection to this area. Paleontologists have been exploring the area since the 1870s, describing more than 1,800 species, making Florissant one of the richest fossil sites in the world. Samuel Scudder conducted an excavation in the Florissant area in 1877 identifying roughly 600 species. Attracted by the Homestead Act of 1862, new settlers began establishing ranches and farms in Florissant. Charlotte Hill collected hundreds of important fossil specimens that she provided to scientists while homesteading and raising six children. In gratitude, the fossil rose, Rosa Hillier, was named after her. Charlotte Hill collected one of the most remarkable fossil butterflies ever found, Prodryas persephone, commonly known as a brush-footed butterfly. Other brush-footed butterflies live in the Florissant ecosystem today. Hundreds of new species of fossil plants, insects, spiders, and vertebrates were described as a result of Hill's work with scientists. The sheer number of fossils on the site made an impression on paleontologists like Theo Cockerell, who arrived in 1906. There has accumulated an almost embarrassing amount of material, and many remarkable things have been discovered. Fluorescent fossils were sent to museums around the world, and the site became famous. Tourists arrived, eager to see the giant petrified stumps and to collect fossils as souvenirs. Dynamite was used to better expose the petrified stumps. An attempt was even made to saw the big stump into pieces to ship to the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago. Broken saw blades from the effort still remain. Colorado Midland Railway allowed passengers to disembark at Florissant and collect fossils. By the 1920s, Tourists were beckoned by commercial sites and a dude ranch with a fireplace made from petrified wood. And now at one time, there were big petrified stumps and logs lying on the ground all around the countryside. But they've mostly been sold or stolen away. Paleobotanist Harry McGinnity began studying fluorescence fossils in the 1930s. 
he saw the fluorescent fossil area as key to understanding the story of life's past. But years of uncontrolled collecting had led to the increasing disappearance of the fossils. Scientific and local communities began to call for conservation of the fossil beds. In 1969, land containing fossils at Florissant was targeted for housing development. The fossils and their clues to ancient life could be lost forever. Scientists like Estella Leopold and other citizens formed a group called the Defenders of Florissant. Paleobotanist McGinnity joined Leopold and others to testify before Congress, and then brought senators to see Florissant firsthand. The land is not of particularly great value for housing or agriculture, but as a page of Earth's history, it is priceless. How can man evaluate his planetary environment and visualize his historic place in it if he does not keep and cherish a few touchstones with the past? In a landmark environmental case, a legal team went to court to stop the imminent destruction of fluorescence fossils and their record of ancient life. To sacrifice this 34 million year old record for 30 year mortgages and basements is like wrapping fish with the Dead Sea Scrolls. On August 20th, 1969, National Monument status was granted to fluorescent fossil beds, safeguarding its geologic heritage for the world. Some of the largest petrified stumps on the planet that once faced bulldozing and dynamite are now protected and monitored for any damage from the environment and weather. It's estimated that some of these trees were more than 230 feet tall and 500 to 700 years old. Florissant has the only known petrified redwood trio, interconnected trunks growing as one plant. The National Monuments paleontology staff and university partners conduct ongoing research and work to stabilize and conserve fragile shale fossils and petrified stumps, keeping it possible for future scientists to study the fossils with new methods so that they can reveal even more knowledge of the past. Countless fossils are only visible under a microscope. Millions of pollen grains, diatoms, and microscopic invertebrates are preserved at fluorescent. Microfossils are critical for understanding habitat, water quality, and climate here 34 million years ago. By comparing fluorescence fossils to modern plants, scientists can determine temperature and rainfall in the ecosystems of the ancient past. Right after the end of the warm Eocene, there was a huge drop in global temperature. The fluorescent climate changed abruptly to a cooler temperate climate. Plants native to the warmer climate either adapted, became extinct, or dispersed to warmer regions. Fossils reveal to scientists how plants and animals responded to climate change in the past. Modern relatives of the golden rain tree are native only to China, Taiwan, and Fiji. Yet they once existed at Florissant millions of years ago. The two most common plant fossils at Florissant are extinct members of the elm and beech families. 
Fossils of more than 30 species of vertebrates have been found. The largest vertebrates were brontotheres, giants weighing two tons and standing eight feet tall. Fish skeletons and mammal teeth are the most abundant. Rare bird fossils have visible feathers captured in the stone. Fluorescent is especially noted for its delicate insect and spider fossils. Fossil plants show evidence of damage from insects similar to today. Delicate fossil butterflies and moths are very rare. Fluorescent has more species of these, perhaps, than any other site in the world. This extremely rare tsetse fly is evidence of a different climate that once existed in Fluorescent. The tsetse fly now lives only in tropical Africa. For ancient life, temperature changes occurred over tens of thousands of years. Some life became extinct. Some adapted to the changing climate and environment. And some dispersed to other places where the climate was more favorable. Climate change is happening today at a much more rapid rate. Fluorescence fossils allow us to look to the past to better understand the present and to guide our stewardship of life in the future.